So it's important we understand that we can't be moved with envy. You remember the story of Cain, Cain and Abel. Why did Cain kill Abel? Envy. Envy. And at the end of the day, Cain's life was never the same again. He became a destitute, he became a vagabond, all because he allowed envy to take a better part of him. It's even worse when the people you are envious of are people under you have no reason to be envious. Here's what you do in order not to be envious, even though that's not the focus of this teaching. Celebrate gifts. Praise talents. You know, commend people. They become the best for you and it will help you to overcome the place of envy. Number two hindrance to exceptional leadership is contention. Contention. What is contention? Contention has to do with strife. You know, in, in, in matters of debate or discussions, it has to do with unnecessary heated controversies. It has to do with, you know, uh, disputes that are not abating. You know, heated disputes. That's contention. Of course, I don't want to even take it up to the point of fisticuff, exchanging fisticuff, no. Contention has to do with an atmosphere that ordinarily should have produced a dialogue, a discussion, entering into a heated debate that ends in strife, comes in with all kinds of dispute and disputations, all kinds of controversies that are not resolved or settled. That's contention. A leader should understand that the moment the atmosphere is contentious, productivity diminishes, creativity dies, you know, ingenuity is buried. You can't allow contention. There is nothing more enhancing than an atmosphere of peace, an atmosphere of calm and gentility, an atmosphere of reasonableness. You know, a, a friend of mine once told me several years ago, that when you see people raise their voice, it may likely mean that they have no capacity to improve their argument. Because he says, instead of you to raise your voice, improve your argument. If you are right, you are right. And if the person cannot see your rightness, raising your voice does not make the person see. Possibly if you improve your argument or come from a different perspective, the person possibly may better understand. So there's no reason in your voice. Just improve your argument. And I agree with that. In the book of Proverbs chapter 13 verse 10, the Bible says, only by pride comes contention. The reason people want to contain, want to become heated, want to insist on their position, regardless of what the posturing of the other party is, the Bible says it's because of pride. You want to make sure that your position has the upper hand. Now listen, it's important you know that clarity and understanding can be progressive. If people do not understand, it could be either that their capacity to process what you are saying has not been given, or their level of being opinionated is so deep that they are not ready to budge. So raising your voice is not going to change that. Rather, it's rather going to anger them and possibly make them stick more to their guns. So what do you do? Improve your argument, let off steam, you know, take a, a, a retreat, come back to the matter again. Ask the person, okay, you know what? We don't have to get into all the disputations, heated argument. You go consider it. We'll come back again, you know, possibly, you know, resonate, let it resonate in your heart, talk it over with the one or two persons, and let's get back to the discussion table. You don't have to allow contention because contention brings the worst out of people.